Hi, and welcome to the Fellowship Session podcast. In this episode, we look at early career postdoc fellowships from the perspective of an early career fellow, Alad Parry, who is a Sir Henry Welcome Fellow at the Babraham Institute. Alad did his PhD at the CRUK Cambridge Institute, so has managed to move institution without moving house. And there's more about why this was important to him in the podcast. We also hear about how he approached his host, came up with his research idea, identified suitable fellowships, and how long the whole application process took. So, Ala, would you like to just introduce where you're at and where you work at the moment? Um, yeah, I'm a uh, Henry Welcome postdoctoral fellow uh, in the Reich Lab at the Babraham Institute in Cambridge, um, working mainly in the lab of Dr. Wolf Reich. Um, and I started my fellowship uh, last August, so I've been going for just over a year. That's great. Thanks very much, Alad. I wonder, I mean, to, to go for a fellowship, you've really got to have an idea you want to pursue, identify a suitable host, and then, of course, think whether the effort's going to be worthwhile. So I wonder if you could just start by telling us how you identified a host and and how you approached him. Um, Yeah, so I I knew um, that I wanted to work with with Wolf Reich. Um, I really admired his work for a while um, and I approached him uh, to ask about postdoctoral research opportunities in his lab, um, but also at the same time, let him know that I wanted to apply for fellowships um, quite early on during my postdoc, and he was quite supportive of that. Um, and as it happened, he had um, some funding available for me to join his lab short term, and I was able to write and apply for fellowships um, during that time, which was uh, which was really great. Um, and and just also to say that. Uh, I was able to um, stay in Cambridge, which was important to me because my wife um, had recently got a job here and we had a house here and that kind of thing was uh, was also a consideration. So that's quite clever. So you moved environment because you moved from the university to the Babraham Institute, but you did actually stay in Cambridge. Yeah, exactly. I didn't have that people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So, Okay, you approached Wolf, you knew you wanted to work with him. You told him you were going to start applying for fellowships. Tell me a bit about how you came up with your idea. Um, So I had uh, a vague idea of what I wanted to work on, or I I knew what I was interested in. Um, But I didn't know um, exactly what would make a a good project. so I went ahead and wrote a few. Um, so I wrote three draft applications, um, just very roughly kind of what the background is and what the aims and the experiments would be. Um, and then I had uh, a few of my colleagues, um, my supervisor, uh, Wolf, and another group leader in the Institute have a look at those and give feedback. Um, and yeah, there was there was a clear favorite from that. and. I was also keen on on that application, that project. So uh, I went ahead with that one. I find it quite remarkable that straight out of a PhD, you already had three different ideas that you could work with. <laughs> what, where does that kind of creative process come from? How do you come up with ideas of research? Um, it's mainly inspired by other people and the people around you. Um, so, for example, we, our lab, when I joined, um, was writing up this really exciting paper um, about how these bits of the genome regulate genes um, and some of the characteristics um, of those, those elements. And um, there were still some interesting questions uh, to be asked about about this work um, from a slightly different angle. Um, and I felt like I could uh, come up with um, experiments uh, to answer those questions that 
built upon skills that I already had and also allowed me to learn uh, new skills or do something a little bit risky. And I thought that those things could come together into an application um, quite nicely. So, Alad, you said um, you approached Wolf, you started working there, then you had to get your three draft applications together, you choose which one, you write it up properly. Could you give us some idea about how the, long this whole process took? Um, yeah, so I finished my PhD um, in October um, 2017, and I stayed uh, in my PhD lab um, for a few months um, just to finish off some, some work that I was doing and also to get my, my paper finished, which, which helped with the, uh, the fellowship application in the end. Um, then I approached Wolf about joining his lab in January 2018. Um, and joined his lab uh, on a contract that was coming to an end um, in in March, at the end of March 2018. Um, and then I think the preliminary deadline for the, the Henry Welcome was um, in September. So I had a few months there to get those applications together. Then the actual um, fellowship itself wouldn't, that takes a while, doesn't it? Because you have the preliminary application, full application, interviews, so when would you actually have moved on to a fellowship? Um, exactly, yeah. So the preliminary application was in, in September, October. Then the full application deadline was in December. And um, I think I found out that I had an interview um, around March, April time. Um, and then um, I started uh, the grant. I activated my fellowship in, in August, um, yeah, so 2019. So the whole process is a, is a long one. Indeed, I think people need to be aware just how long that takes. So that's like almost 18 months after when you first approached Wolf that you yes, yeah, have definitely. the money in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it for a long time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder if you could just tell us um, how you, because you, you've got the Henry Welcome, but was that the only one you applied for? Or did you look at others? Um, you seem to have quite an elaborate system for investigating funding, so perhaps you could share that with us. Um, yep, yeah, so I uh, basically collated uh, all the opportunities that I could find into, into a big Excel spreadsheet. Um, and I, I found those basically by looking at the kind of funding that colleagues had, um, looking at the funding that people who were speaking uh, were using, um, as well as uh, some of the the different careers websites, um, both Cambridge's careers website and also from other universities. Um, tried to summarize some of the, um, the criteria and um, the deadlines um, in that spreadsheet. And then I just color coded them based on which ones I was eligible for. Um, so for example, I wasn't eligible for the Marie Curie because I did my PhD in, in the UK and I wanted to stay in the UK for my, for my postdoc. Um, so the list uh, got, got smaller and uh, the Henry Welcome was certainly at the top of my list because um, firstly I met the criteria and it's, uh, it's a great and very prestigious fellowship um, and I really admire the Welcome Trust as an organisation so that, that really helped as well. Thanks. So Alad, you've, you've now described like 18 months of work to finally get your own money, your own project. Do you feel that's a good investment in time and effort for the future? Um, I really think it, it was. Um, it's really fantastic to have um, my own fellowship. I feel really strong ownership of my, my research and my research program. Um, it's allowed me to uh, be a bit more financially independent. I've bought, for example, my own equipment. I've bought my own laptop. Um, I have some money to spend on wet lab experiments, which is, uh, which is really nice. Um, because of the, the COVID uh, situation this year, I haven't been able to travel as much as I'd like, but um, I'm looking forward to visiting my mentor, um, or second sponsor, um, Mark Marty Renom in the CRG in Barcelona. Um, so he's supporting my project. And uh, the idea was that I go there to, um, to learn some new skills some computational skills. Um, I'm looking forward to traveling um, to conferences, um, and perhaps attending some, some courses. Um, and I feel like I have a lot of freedom to do those things now. So I think it's really 
um, enhanced my experience. <laughs> and of course, it will, uh, it will just put me in good stead for the next steps as well, I think. Well, thanks so much, Alad. I've just one last thing. If you were in the audience as a PhD student, um, thinking back, was there anything that you know now that you didn't know then and you wish that somebody in your position had told you? Um, I think it would be nice to know that uh, you, 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 can, you, you can do these things. You can uh, put yourself forward for these, these things. They, they sound um, scary, but when I applied, I didn't feel like I had an amazing publication record or a lot of preliminary data or anything like that. And sometimes you, you assume that you need those things. Um, but really, I feel like by using um, kind of the excellent people around me and uh, some my, my mentors and um, by planning my applications well, that um, I was able to to succeed and be awarded this fellowship. So I think just, uh, yeah, just to highlight that you don't need to be um, uh, publishing tens of papers from your PhD or... <laughs> um, well, that's really reassuring. Thanks very much for giving us your time, Alad. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. For people listening, you'll be able to put your own questions to Alad on the 14th of January. You'll find the link to register for the Early Career Fellowships Meet the Fellowship Holders Q&A session below this podcast or in Handshake. I'm still processing the fact that it took 18 months from when Alad first approached his host until starting his fellowship. That's it from me, Sally Todd, for today. If you like what you heard, head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. <laughs>